Hi, uh, my name is uh, Andrzej Jakubowiak. I'm from the University of Chicago and I am at the MMRF meeting in San Diego where we just concluded uh, a session about CAR-T uh, and other immunotherapies and I'm here with Dr. Zadam Cohen and Dr. Kackendorfer who have presented uh, their data. And I'd like to start with a quick question. What was uh, maybe main take from your uh, respective presentation and maybe overall um, uh, impression from the session? Adam, can you start? Sure, so uh, I presented on our uh, updated data from our trial at UPenn using a BCMA targeted CAR T cells in relapse refractory myeloma patients. Um, and we treated a total of 25 patients in three different cohorts, uh, both with and without cytoxan lymphodepletion. Um, and the main takeaways are that we saw responses overall in 48% of patients, 55% uh, in those treated at the higher 10 to the eighth dose. Um, we did see cytokine release syndrome and neurotoxicity uh, as seen with other CAR T cells, but no unexpected or off-target toxicities. Um, and we actually saw that in the groups with cytoxan, we saw more consistent uh, T cell expansion. Um, and uh, what we've seen is that uh, while the majority of patients are responding, uh, in most cases these responses are not durable. The median duration of response was about four months, though we do have three ongoing long-term responders uh, more than a year. So uh, responses are respectable for this patient population. Duration of response may be a little bit disappointing. Uh, how was it in NIH study, James? So we started a study in 2014 with an anti-BCMA CAR T cell that we developed. This um, CAR was tested in advanced myeloma patients as in the case of the other studies. We found that there was a very important dose um, effect that in that the lowest three doses we had really minimal activity. But when we achieved what we call the optimal dose or the highest dose level, we had um, a dose of 9 million CAR T cells per kilogram. We had an 81% response rate in that dose level, and out of 16 patients treated on that dose level, four of them had responses that lasted a year or more. The longest response that we had was 84 weeks, and that patient eventually relapsed in his central nervous system. So in addition to those four, we had another patient that has an ongoing response at 41 weeks. So we had, um, out of 16 patients, 25% achieved more than a year, and then plus that one with 41 weeks. So there is some durability of response. And with an 81% of our response rate, we think it, it was definitely an active, um, an active approach, especially when we consider that it's essentially a single agent approach. We have a conditioning regimen of bludarabine, which has basically no activity against myeloma, and a very small one cycle dose of cyclophosphamide, 300 milligrams per meter squared for three days. Um, and after the CAR T cell infusion, the patients get no other therapy. So there's certainly um, encouragement there, but on the other hand, we are not curing patients. We only have two ongoing responses. So if we cure anyone, it's a very small fraction, which is somewhat uh, probably a lower fraction um, of long-term responses compared to the experience with CAR T cell therapies for lymphoma, where we um, have a long, very long-term multi-year response within probably 30 to 40%, uh, probably more like 40% of patients. So it's, um, I think a very encouraging approach. It's very early on. We have to understand these are the very first um, CAR T cell protocols to be tested. So it's a very, in a very primitive state, in a single agent state. So it's a very um, encouraging, although very early results is basically the overall summary. And maybe I would jump in that at the same meeting, she's not here with us, uh, but uh, Dr. Lin uh, presented um, uh, and summarized uh, what uh, we know um, as far as results from two industry studies, uh, from Bluebird and from um, a formerly legend now um, that would be uh, done with this construct by uh, Janssen. Uh, those uh, responses were maybe uh, uh, even more encouraging. Uh, I wouldn't play down uh, your results. Right. Uh, it's all uh, progress which we are making and I would take it as a progress that we have uh, unraveled uh, uh, maybe um, even more encouraging potential of CAR-Ts targeting BCMA uh, in a most recent update from Bluebird study, uh, um, PFS was approaching 12 months in the higher dose level. Uh, any comments and right. why do you think uh, uh, those results uh, appear to be maybe better? Again, I am very reserved in terms of comparing between studies, but that is uh, 
uh, what we have and what uh, what the next step uh, in, in the, this uh, BCMA targeted terror. So I can comment on that. I'm actually also participating in the Bluebird cell gene study. I've been involved in that since the beginning. Mm -hmm. We treat a lot of patients on that study. So it's um, as you mentioned, the, pro the progression free survival that, that was mentioned is very important. Um, I have one patient on that study that's been in complete remission for two years, so there is some durability there on that um, Bluebird study, uh, now taken over by Celgene, but it's, um, toxicity seems like perhaps it is somewhat milder than in our NCI experience. Um, so as you said, it's very promising, very high response rate with some durability in some patients. I think it's too soon to say you know, the durability with that study. Uh, obviously, we don't have complete follow-up yet. We've treated the first patient just a little over like two and a half years ago. So um, definitely very encouraging though. Yeah, I mean, I will add to that we actually accept some of the uh, plots uh, of um, uh, duration of some responses which appear to be durable from that and we don't have uh, tabulated PFS from that study. So, uh, Correct, and, and the legend study, um, as you mentioned, was really a different population, they mm -hmm. less heavily pretreated than the other trials right. that were done in the U.S. And I think, um, as you mentioned, it, it, you have to be a little careful comparing across different studies. There were different inclusion exclusion criteria and, right. and perhaps not exactly the same populations. But I think overall the gist is that BCMA has been validated as a target and we're able to get responses. Um, I agree with James that really these are sort of the first entry, or the first foray of, of CAR T cells in myeloma and the products and the way we treat and select patients may get better overall. And um, in our study, we've identified perhaps some features um, that patients who have uh, more fit T cells at the time of collection may actually have better outcomes. And that sort of provides the thought that you might want to treat patients that are a little bit earlier in their line of treatment, not so heavily pretreated. And Do you agree? Yes, yes definitely. I think um, moving to an earlier patient population is one thing to do. Another very um, fruitful area of research that hasn't been looked into yet is combination therapies. Most myeloma therapies are all combination therapies, and I think there are many opportunities to combine CAR T cells with other approaches. What level of duration of response would make you encouraging uh, and or promoting strongly for the development of CAR T strategies? Maybe I'll start with you, Adam. Sure. So again, I think it depends on the setting. In this heavily refractory population where really there were no other options, I think if you're getting you know, 10, 12 months of uh, progression-free survival, to me, that, that's enough. These patients are getting a break off of therapy that they wouldn't ordinarily get. Um, earlier on, though, if you move it up, then you need to start getting a couple of years. It's got to start looking like transplant or maybe there has to be a cure fraction. Um, so I think it depends which setting we try to use them. I agree. And uh, there is at least appearance from, for now, not very well tabulated, but somehow emerging uh, data that um, those responses uh, are um, uh, in high risk patients as well. Many of these patients were indeed high, high risk patients. So we are um, achieving those in improvements, um, uh, what it appears to be um, uh, across the board uh, mm -hmm. of um, uh, myeloma. And it may be uh, by extrapolation that if we move it earlier, um, the, the PFS and duration of response uh, may be even extended. That is a speculation at this time, but it is by every experience in myeloma usually the case. Whatever works uh, in, in um, uh, advanced disease uh, for about three months seems to be working for 10, 11, 15 months in relapse and even more so in frontline setting. So I think that would be my uh, take on what I've seen. What do you think about other targets um, and uh, eventually uh, maybe very briefly, uh, we don't want to, uh, it's just speculation this time, there's a SLAM F7 uh, effort uh, from at least two uh, groups and uh, maybe a, a double uh, CAR T's also in, in developments. Uh, any of you can take um, this question. Mm -hmm. I think that it's crucial to find more targets. Um, as um, we know, multiple myeloma can be a heterogeneous disease with multiple subclones. Um, so it's critical to find more targets. The SLAMA 7 I think is a promising target. It's expressed at high levels on myeloma. There's no doubt it has a few drawbacks of being expressed on NK cells also um, and also some T cell subsets, which is uh, a drawback. But I think definitely worth looking into and perhaps um, could be a useful therapy. 
how about alternatives uh, along the same lines? Uh, there was also a very much uh, provocative and I think encouraging uh, presentation uh, from Dr. Einsella with uh, by uh, also targeting BCMA. I'm going to be provocative. Mm -hmm. uh, why to stick to CARTIS if uh, what appears to be uh, by uh, targeting uh, BCMA seem to be at least by his um, uh, center experience uh, doing quite well? Yeah, so I agree that the early data looked good. It was a, a small uh, experience. Um, I think the, the main difference is, is maybe just in, uh, it's going to determine durability of, of response. And um, are you need to keep patients on this therapy continuously to maintain that response, um, as opposed to CAR T cells, which is a one-time treatment and you're done, uh, which I think is more appealing to patients. But I think we really uh, don't know yet. And we're looking forward to getting more of the bispecific data, more of the antibody drug conjugate data. There's fortunately a lot of different ways to target BCMA um, that are showing a lot of promise. And um, eventually, you know, when we have more data, we'll be able to compare pros and cons and figure out where to put them all in. Maybe that now is a good segue to how to conclude this uh, discussion and this session at the end of uh, uh, this uh, Myeloma Summit. I, I think that what we know is uh, more than encouraging. Um, some uh, have been disappointed that uh, patients who had appeared to be in long-standing uh, remissions in stringency are now are um, uh, almost certainly from Bloomberg data are relapsing. That was disappointing to many, but I think I would emphasize that we have um, uh, modality which is uh, maybe even tripling uh, um, uh, duration of responses compared to everything else we tested in this patient population. And we have a lot of uh, work to do to potentially uh, find uh, the place and time of using CAR-T therapy. Thank you very much.